Mark Herman, a name that strikes saw in the heart of war gamers everywhere. Mark Herman is the designer of very well known, highly play, praised classics uh, such as For the People or Washington's War and Power of the Sun. And some of his games are also known as some of the most challenging games out there to learn and to kind of figure out how to really work. But when you do put in the work and you figure them out, then these games are really rewarding. Uh, Mark Herman has come out with a new game and now you're wondering is this gonna be like for the people? Is it gonna be as complex as Empire of the Sun? Not quite. This game is called Ribbit. And no, this is not some code word for some obscure World War II plan or secret device or something. This is the name of a game inspired by frogs, so rabbit, rabbit, because this is the jump, move and block game. Yes, this is not the cover of the game, this is the game, this is a very small game. Mark Herman for once, contrary to expectations maybe, uh, has gone for the filler market. This is a game that is self-published, self-produced, uh, you can buy it on Amazon and I believe that as soon as you place the order, Mark Herman will make a copy for you. I, that's why I understand, these are uh, all self-made. Uh, the board, uh, I'll show it to you later, I'll show you the back later for reasons that will be appreciated as the review unfolds. Uh, the board is made on some sort of like sturdy plastics, it's a single piece, uh, very portable, it comes in a Ziploc bag. The game has a cover and a rule manual. This is the rule manual. I know a little different from the one for Empire of the Sunny. And uh, also the rules are summarized here in this section of the board. It is an abstract game as you can probably already see from the board. Each side has five meeples, two of which start on the board, plus three meeples that stay here, and three discs. The meeples are called pieces and the discs are called, the discs are called blockers. The purpose of the game is to score points by exiting your meeples from the board. This is the exit space, so you want to bring your meeples here and then they will sit in those spaces there. In order of arrival, the first meeple to exit goes here, the second meeple here, and so on and so forth. And each meeple scores the number of points indicated on the space where the meeple will land. So the first meeple to get there will be worth one point, the second meeple two points, and so on and so forth. Purpose of the game is to score six points, six points wins, first player to gets there wins and ends the game. Now, how does it work? During your turn, you perform two actions. You take two actions, uh, unless it is a first turn. First player, first turn only takes one action, everybody else two otherwise. The actions can be to simply move one of your pieces. There's a single action, you move a piece across a connection to the next dot. You follow connections, you don't move diagonally, you don't do funny stuff. As simple as that. That would be two moves, uh, two actions, uh, that would be my full turn. And or you can spend one of your actions to enter a piece. So you move a piece from your stock to one of the two uh, colored dots that represent your entry areas that a player also has two entry areas. So I can spend an action to do that, to enter a piece. I can also spend an action uh, to exit a piece. That simply means I'm moving a piece on the exit space and then I transfer it here. Or I can, this is very interesting, spend an action to place a blocker on the board. The blocker needs to be placed on an empty dot, any one empty dot, as long as it is not adjacent to another blocker. So this is not a legal placement, but this would be, this would be. Blockers can be adjacent to meeples of any color, but again, they cannot be adjacent to blockers. What do blockers do? Uh, actively nothing, they just sit there for the rest of the game, you cannot move them to other spaces, but then the space becomes impassable, nobody can get there. Also, I, I should mention that the meeples are impassable usually, that is, you cannot move through them, you cannot uh, share the same space with them. There is, however, a way for you to jump pieces, similarly to what happens in checkers. Uh, the procedure is very simple if I show it to you, it is also, uh, you have a um, reminder. Put in words, as I was reading from the 
manual, somehow it seemed very complicated, much more than it is. Simply put, in this game, if you have two pieces in a line and they're adjacent to another piece of another color and there's an empty space behind them, then you can use the pieces in the back to kind of like hop, hop, jump over the head of everybody and remove the enemy piece. This actually also applies in case that there is a blocker here, then you can jump the blocker and the blocker can be removed. Again, blockers cannot move, but they can be removed if jumped, like regular pieces. However, in order to jump, you need to have two of your pieces, two of your meeples in a line. You can't use a blocker as one of the two parts that you use for a jump. As simple as that. When you jump an enemy piece, like in this case, the enemy is removed. And super simple. This is pretty much the game. You alternate moving pieces on the board, uh, jumping, placing blockers, until one of the two players has scored a total of six points here, and that player is the winner. Super simple, definitely a game that, as I said, goes for the filler niche, but is it a good one? Well, for the filler niche, heck yeah, this is a pretty pretty fun filler to play. It has many advantages. Uh, one is that the rules are so simple, the game can definitely be played with children. It can be a family game, you can play with your small children or children. You can play with grandpa when grandpa is visiting. Uh, you can play with your spouse. Anyone, even people that are not really into gaming can play it. The rules are that simple. Now, as for the strategy, uh, the strategy beginning seems pretty obvious and that's kind of the point. If people just stop at the first game or two, it may seem pretty dull because they may just think that the game is all about running there with your two with your meeples, both sides are just running there, whoever gets there first. If you play like this, the game probably will feel pretty dry, but you don't have to and you shouldn't play like that. In a sense, it's like saying that any game is kind of like boring and, and pointless if you don't play it seriously, if you don't believe in the design, if you just perform moves in a sloppy fashion. Because as pieces start to moving, you will realize that there are many ways of playing with the blockers, that can do some pretty fun stuff. For example, if I place my blockers, say, uh, like this, this is a perfectly legal placement, the blockers are not adjacent, but now the red player needs to go around, uh, has a, may have a hard time, especially if then I send some of my people here and I start blocking that area. Again, in a simple straightforward game, uh, red goes for this side, blue goes for this side. But if you're playing this game now with children, uh, or with children that are a little bit mean and devious, or especially if you're playing the game with adults that want to see some of the subtleties that the design can express, then you will start seeing the people uh, sending their meeples in the other direction. Often using the meeples that come from here, sort of like the attackers or defender, uh, defenders, and trying to use the meeples that come from here uh, as the runners. But precisely because of this, the runners will probably get some blocker in their way and uh, there will be some quote-unquote fight here between defenders and attackers in the middle of the of the board. Remember you need two people, two meeple in a row to perform quote-unquote an attack, that means that if you have two meeple and you move them sequentially you can have your little strike force. Uh, but again, then the opponent may simply block it that way, and then we have a little bit of a standoff, be standoff because the first player that moves now will probably get jumped. So if you move one, you may want to move down one or do some other things. The other important thing, as you can see here, is that blockers are blockers, but as I said earlier, meeples are also blockers. It's just that they are mobile blockers because they block the way, uh, they block passage to other meeples. So so they're pretty powerful because they are movable, but again, you can maneuver around them. And if you maneuver smart enough, then the blockers become, the, the meeples that you're using as blockers can be endangered. So, um, children will just run for the exit. Casual gamers will try to do a mix of the two things. 
board gamers can play this and be as confrontational as they want instead of getting there they can play to let's see who is the last player who is even able to crawl there with the last the one that the battle war and a piece it can get much more confrontation it can be a little bit claustrophobic but in a good sense ultimately this is a small board so every move counts if uh, the placement of the blockers and the meeples causes bottlenecks here and there then it gets to a point where being a simple move behind uh, can be well what decides the game both players played well and placed their pieces ready for the final run and at that point one player is one move behind which simply means that they played in a pretty balanced way actually very often i've seen the game go to the last to the last meeple because one player had five points and the other player had four points so it really was a fight to the last meeple and Basically, you win a quick victory if you get the first three meeples in, then you have six points immediately. Otherwise, the way in which the, in which the um, score is organized on the track will create that challenge that will make it such that the advantage will switch and it won't be that easy to <clears throat> tip the balance. It will likely and often go to last meeple, which of course rewards good play. Now, the way I describe the strategy here, maybe you started thinking that I was talking about uh, Empire of the Sun or For the People or Washington's War. Uh, there's a little bit of Washington's War, actually. You know, Washington War, Washington's War has been described that go during the American Revolutionary War. But the fact of getting around other people, blocking passages, uh, something, there is a little reminiscence in there. But of course, this is a very different animal. This is a good filler. It's very asset, it's very simple, and what I really like is that it can be played in different ways by different people, but many different people can play. Children can enjoy it, uh, adults can enjoy it, and the game lasts some 5-10 minutes, uh, depending on how people play it. Which means that probably it will be played for 2 or 3 hours. Maybe 3 hours now, but 2 hours. An hour, maybe. So between an hour and two hours, I would say. Um, why? Why? Because it's so addictive. Because, yes, this game, you lost catastrophically in three moves and you saw the horrendous mistake that you made. And now, of course, you are much wiser than you were five minutes ago when you lost the game. So you say, why don't you play another game? And now you lose catastrophically again in a different way because now you were able to prevent... Uh, the strategy that hurt you before from happening. Meanwhile, the opponent has figured another one. Uh, so you're like, oh, wait a second, let's try again. And now the other side plays. And they say, look, so the watch says, well, we still have 10 minutes. Why don't we play again? Because, you know, I want to really, I want to rematch. The fact that the game lasts 5 minutes, 10 minutes, and it's so easy for the losing side to get a rematch, or the illusion, the hope for um, a new game that will balance things and will bring back the pride, that's a very strong temptation that will bring you uh, back to the game. It'll probably make you want to play the game over and over again after you start playing it it's simple very linear with some hidden depth not the deepest game that there is out there but in the realm of the fillers ribbit is king when it comes to strategy there is more strategy here than you have in your average filler while at the same time you have a game that indeed 100 can be used as a filler last kick uh, the games I said is some nice sturdy plastic and on the back my copy was signed by His Holiness himself uh, Who knows since this game is Self-published maybe he will sign your copy too and if he does well for some gamers This only would be worth the price of a mission. Hey, before you get the autograph and you also get a game with it and the game is a pretty fun one if of course a simple one and definitely a filler ribbit by mark herman not your typical herman herman in terms of size and scope but i would say yes your typical herman in terms of how smart the design is